So I wanted to talk about the Disney Marvel Daredevil issue. Daredevil Born Again has been completely retooled. Let's get into it. Let's talk about it. Good evening, friends, or morning, or wherever you live. I am the man you may know as he from Our Views Will Kill You, and I wanted to talk a little bit about Daredevil. You know, the best thing that ever came out of Marvel TV on Netflix, the Daredevil series with Charlie Cox, the one that we mostly love. Season one, fantastic. Season two, a mixed bag of treats. Season three, pretty solid. And then we're getting the news coming out of Hollywood about the Daredevil situation. Let's look at it. First, what we're going to hear about is apparently Vincent D'Onofrio has decided to leave X and all social media platforms. I don't know if he's left it yet. But the whole reason why he's leaving is because of a little bit of a kerfuffle that he got himself into when he thanked the staff and crew of Daredevil after fim- filming a extremely difficult scene and, uh, you know, said it was intense and personal. <laughs> and then they all got fired. He said, I look forward. He's like, oh, we had such a great day. So difficult, but, but very rewarding. And, um, yeah, they got canned. So I think he feels foolish. So he left everyone with a poem and doesn't want to talk about it anymore, doesn't want to be on a platform, and he's just going to wait to get back to work. So, (laughs) kind of amusing. I don't know how he's working if there's a strike on, but who knows? This is relatively new breaking news, so I don't exactly know what he was doing. So, he is, I think he's a great actor, and I think he just got himself in a bad situation here. But let's talk about the overhaul of Daredevil as Marvel decides to reset its television business. Here's, well, here's, I'll tell you what I know, and then we'll talk about the bigger picture, right? Because that's what we like to do. We like to talk big picture. What they like to do is film shows without pilots. So you don't really get a warm-up to see whether or not you like... Normally what happens in TV is people shoot a pilot. And you can always tell this when you see the first episode. It looks a little wonky. It looks a little cheaper. doesn't always fit the lore exactly the same. And then, uh, you know, they shop it around to different places and they decide if it's good enough. Competition decides whether or not it's going to get picked up what kind of budget budget it's going to have. Disney doesn't do that. Disney's just like, we're making 18 episodes, or we're making six episodes, or we're making 10 episodes. Here's the writers. We're going to plug you into the Marvel machine, and you'll be good. Well, that has not turned out to be a good thing. So let's look at, here's the real interesting numbers. that, And this is coming directly from, this is Hollywood uh, Reporter showing all of this. So you're getting this from a, very interesting source. Uh, and think about it. They've had all these shows, right? And and um, I'm trying to get all of them so you can see them. They've had Loki, WandaVision, Falcon and the Winter Soldier, She-Hulk, Moon Knight, Hawkeye, Secret Invasion, What If, and Miss Marvel. And this is how many total viewing hours they had. And the only one of these shows that got renewed... guaranteed for a second season was Loki, which we're currently reviewing. Probably up here somewhere. You can see it. I think I reviewed it. I'm on episode two at this point. So Loki season one, disappointing. Wanda's vision, all right, bad ending. Falcon and the Winter Soldier, disappointing. She-Hulk, absolute garbage fire. Moon Knight, kind of boring. Hawkeye, I kind of liked it, but basically just to pass the mantle to someone else. Secret Invasion was a hot dumpster fire. What if I enjoyed, but is a cartoon, so you can't expect a lot out of it. Much cheaper production. And then you have Miss Marvel, which was an absolute disaster. Um, Worst viewed show by a long shot. And guess what? She's going to star in the new movie, uh, The Marvels, which is going to bomb as well. Marvel's in big, big trouble. 
they filmed, from what I understand, eight episodes of Daredevil. And spoiler alert for <laughs> episodes you're never going to see. Um, Daredevil does not don the Daredevil costume until episode four. And um, Foggy and uh, Karen are killed off screen. So you don't get to see that. Or it's just Foggy. We're not sure if it's Foggy and Karen. Uh, and that's the reason why he doesn't want to be Daredevil anymore. So you don't even get to see him be Daredevil until episode four. 18 episodes is a lot. It's, it's a lot. And um, which I'm okay with. I mean, it's almost like regular television. But the thing with regular television is they kind of film it in stages and then they get to reevaluate. Like, oh, people like this character. Maybe we should do something with this by the end of the season. They film it in stages. Marvel just films the whole thing and then releases it. It's it's not they're not making TV a traditional way. And clearly it, it, they're just they they need to do it a different way because it, it's not working. It's just it's not working. Um they're 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 trying to marry the Marvel culture with traditional television culture. And how can we tell stories in television that honor what's so great about the source material? They literally fired the showrunners and writers of the show after eight. They filmed eight episodes. Crazy, crazy, crazy. I mean, the amount of money that they're 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 losing. So the one big thing that people have been talking about is that TV is a producer. No, movies are director and producer driven sh like mediums. You know, you get a great director like Steven Spielberg or um, uh, the guy who does uh, Tenant. <clears throat> I can't believe I'm blanking on his name, but I'm sure, you know, he did the bat. Uh, Christopher Nolan. Duh. Christopher Nolan wants to direct what he wants to direct. It's a, it's a he's, he's only got two hours to do it. He's going to get done whatever he wants to get done. It sounds fantastic. Uh TV is much more, from what I understand, a writer medium. The writer has to has to drive it, and um, you can't just have a producer and showrunner. In and in fact, the Moon Knight show creator and writer he quit halfway through, um, and a totally different person took the reins. The um, Jessica Gal developed and wrote she She Hulk Attorney at Law, but was sidelined as soon as the the director came on board. So what they're saying is they've had problems with all of these shows and the executives are, are messing around with it. In fact, the one that we just heard was Secret Invasion, which should have been interesting and a hit, but was absolute garbage. They had the writer and executive producer of the Emmy Award winning Mr. Robot had been working on scripts for about a year and then was abruptly replaced and they decided to go in a different direction. The guy who took over had no experience and wrote a garbage story that made no like was completely boring and pointless, and felt so incredibly small and stakes and dumb. So here's what they what I mean. This article is huge. They talk about so much of what's going on here. I mean, they decided to put together like who wants to see Ironheart or Echo or any of these other shows nobody's asking for them. They're just like, we know what the fans want. And that's the difference is, is in TV. You understand, you have time to understand what the, what the fans seem to like. Maybe there's a character that needs to change. The classic example is from the Simpsons. The Simpsons was a Bart Simpson driven show up until the second season. When they f started to figure out that Bart mania was a fad and the true heart and soul of the show was Homer Simpson. And then they switched gears and made the show more Homer centric and 30 seasons later, whatever, they're still around because they paid attention to what the fans were looking at. They, they understood that the show needed to change and evolve while they were working on it, not just based on what they're being dictated from the top. So let me know what you guys think. This is pretty interesting. I, I daredevil. It sounds like a complete disaster. And I really hate to see that because I, I, I really like the depiction that Vincent D'Onofrio brings in the Kingpin. It's just amazing. You know, is Disney Plus going to allow him to be as intense and violent as he was? We got a glimpse of him in Hawkeye, and I 
didn't necessarily like that version. It seemed a little bit softer. And then you also have the this version, you know, you have um, Cox still in it. So we want to, I like his depiction. I think he's great. And I really liked what he did over at Netflix. What are we going to get here? I don't know. How do you can eight episodes and then go, go and do 18 new ones? Who are they going to hire? Like, I, I don't know what's going on here. It's craziness. It's absolute craziness. Let's talk about it. What do you guys think? Is Marvel totally toast? Are they done? Is Do they need to hot fire Kevin Feige? Is it all over? Let me know. Let's talk about it. I'll do a little bit more about this when I uh, get any more information. I'm a little late to the story, but I thought it was a good one for us to talk about. Love to hear from you guys. Again, uh, check out our live stream, 7.30 Friday nights, Eastern Standard Time. Come join the party. We have a great time. It's a good time for you, good time for me. We'll all party. But for myself, I am on to the next one. Music.